Well, tensions have escalated continually in the United States. We've had Tucker Carlson calling for calm on Fox News the other night, but it doesn't seem that the deep state are willing to acquiesce. And we've now gotten to the point where a former CIA director has called for Donald Trump to take a big seat in old Sparky. Yeah, utterly ridiculous. Speaking of the great orange hope, we have a video on lotuseaters.com from our very own Carl, uh, who has said why Donald Trump should be the nominee for 2024. If you go to the website and subscribe, you'll be able to watch this. Obviously, we over at the Lotus Eaters appreciate what Ron DeSantis does, for example. Mm -hmm. There are other great uh, contenders who are throwing their hat in the ring, like Larry Elder at, at CPAC a little while ago. But even though he was the man that, that set me on a red pill journey, it has to be Trump just for pure mimetic synthesis. As uh, Carl says in the thumbnail here, complete the story arc. Mm. I mean, that is very true, that you can't leave this unresolved, that the state has basically persecuted Donald Trump, made no. him out to be this fascist dictator that's a danger to everyone who he comes into contact with when we know that that's not true. Yeah, their illegitimate judicial overreach is making him look like the president in exile, and so he needs to ride back in on a golden horse. Mm -hmm. Speaking of illegitimate uh, judicial overreach... So last week's coverage on the podcast, just to give you a crash course on that, you can go and see all the sources. Um, all that happened was the FBI broke the lock on the door for the confidential documents boxes uh, at Mar-a-Lago, which they themselves placed there. They asked the Trump family to turn off all the security cameras, face the wall, etc. Uh, the Washington Post claimed that Trump was holding nuclear documents, even the nuclear codes get changed implying that he was going to sell them overseas or post them on Truth or something. And then Merrick Garland confirmed he had personally authorised the raid, which was signed off of, of course, by a judge who was formally prosecuting Epstein, then quit and switched sides to then defend Jeffrey Epstein, also a Obama and Jeb Bush donor. So just Brilliant some interesting there. stuff, yeah. Um, so the updates that we have that we're covering today... So Trump claims that his passports were confiscated during the FBI raid. Um, what, is, what rationale is provided for that? Because you'd think that that's just a petty inconvenience to get on his nerves. But Well, two were expired, but one is his, is his active diplomatic passport. So I would assume that hobbles his ability to engage in overseas dealings or escape the country if they were to, if they were to try and properly persecute him. Um, so... Does that essentially function as a, a means of him getting out of the country, say they revoke his regular passport for I would, some reason? I would assume so, because otherwise, as you said, it would sound very arbitrary. Um, now, there was a CBS news anchor called Nora O'Donnell, and, and she ran interference with the FBI saying that they had, oh, we had no passports in our possession whatsoever. But then there was an email, if you, if you scroll up, Michael, um, from the National Security Division's Jay Bratt, corroborating Trump's claim they took the passports, saying that they are in possession of two expired and one active diplomatic passport. So the FBI clearly took it, and then the news media have not caught up with their, their recent NPC programming, so they haven't changed their script yet. At least they're too incompetent to get away with lying. That's something. Oh, they're definitely trying to be very opaque. And their mm. opaqueness does mean that even Trump's more reasonable critics, shall we say. I mean, we had Francis Foster in last week, who thinks he's very divisive. I think he's more the coroner than, than the gunman to the American Republic. But even they can say, right, by, by the pure overreach and opaqueness of the investigation, you, you can't stand with the Democrats at this point, even if you're a bit tepid on Trump on, on either sides of the aisle. Um, I'm very much not, and I think that this is a catalyst for hopefully waking people up to well, the, this the seems fact like that the, his presidency was The Russiagate decent. stuff, doesn't it? All over again, in that they're, they're trying to push a story which they simply don't have the evidence for, mm -hmm. and then once the damage is done, all of the evidence is going to come out and say, yes, this is all a fabricated thing mm. to damage the reputation of Donald Trump. And I hope that this time around, there are actual repercussions for this kind of nonsense. So I'm just going to read a quote here. The Justice Department noted in a filing with a US District Court that the search warrant and a receipt for items seized from the Mar-a-Lago have already been made public. The department said there, there remain compelling reasons, including to protect the integrity of an ongoing law enforcement uh, investigation that implicates national security, that support keeping the affidavit sealed. It said the government had a compelling, overriding interest in preserving the integrity of an ongoing criminal investigation, a.k.a. we just want to keep this under wraps. Not excellent. So, then there were some procedural failures by the FBI, which, uh, which Fox News reported on. 
They've seized some privileged documents during the raid. Um, sources familiar with the investigation told Fox News on Saturday that a set of documents, all seen on the final page of the FBI's property receipt, contained information covered by attorney-client privilege. The FBI seized these reports from, uh, from Trump's Palm Beach home during its unprecedented more, more, uh, Monday morning raid. Um, the former president is disputing the classification, saying the records have been declassified. Trump's team asked the Justice Department for their position on whether or not they would support a third-party independent special master to review those records. Sources told Fox News that the DOJ had notified Trump's team that they would oppose this request, and the Department of Justice declined to comment, and the FBI as well. So again, it's it, to use the old Patriot Act phrase, if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear. Well, then why are the DOJ and the FBI being so opaque on their persecution of the former president? Um, the warrant and property receipt were unveiled on, on Friday afternoon, but the Justice Department are sort of kicking and dragging their heels on this, if we go to the next one. Um, the Department of Justice was ordered on Wednesday to respond to motions to unseal the warrant used in the FBI's raid of Donald Trump's home. Eric Trump said in an interview with DailyMail.com that the FBI did not hand over a copy of the warrant to the lawyer on the Florida property at the time of the raid. So this is a kind of equivalent of not reading you your Miranda rights if you're arrested. Um, Magistrate Judge Bruce Reinhart, the one connected to Jeffrey Epstein, Hmm. who allegedly signed and approved the unprecedented search, said the DOJ must file by Monday a response to motions to unseal the document um, from the Albany Times Union and conservative group Judicial Watch. So we've got people from nonprofits getting on the side of this and trying to make this a little bit more transparent than it actually is. Um, appointed to his, uh, his current position in 2018, Reinhardt had recused himself in June from a lawsuit between Trump and Hillary Clinton because of a personal bias at the time. Interesting. I wonder if that's to do with Epstein's flight logs. Um, Trump was suing Clinton, the Democratic National Committee, and other political entities for promoting stories alleging he had colluded with Russia during the 2016 campaign. So as you brought it up, these things are all interrelated. In, inter uh, and it seems like the Democrats, even though they know that they're not going to face any reputational damage from this that has any lasting effect at the ballot boxes, particularly because things are often fortified in their favour, um, it's likely that they're thinking, OK, if we can character assassinate our opposition in the press, we can kneecap his potential third campaign. And then we also have the Clinton lawyer having a mask off moment saying, there's a particular part of this 2017 statute that means that if Trump is prosecuted, he can't run for office again. We're hoping to get him hooked on that. So it's just a, just a political assassination effort. So we've got a little bit of Republican backlash. There's actually a bipartisan request for information on the search, because obviously it wasn't handed over at the time. Oh, that. yeah, it's an inherently political act, isn't it? The the FBI are clearly acting on behest of the Democrats, mm. and it, it seems to me entirely evident, particularly with the background of the Hunter Biden laptop stuff, that people within the FBI were actually deliberately suppressing information to help the Democrats in an election. The fact there hasn't been a purge of the FBI to clear these clearly partisan people out of there seems to suggest that the Democrats are happy with the status quo and they're willing to use the FBI to their own advantage, as demonstrated here. Well, the FBI was originally meant to be a temporary institution, but it seems that the Democrats, almost like uh, uh, Stalin's party, um, this was written about by George Frosch Kennan in Sources of Soviet Conduct, his sort of assessment during the Cold War, that you had to redefine perpetual enemies in order to justify holding on to the organs of state power and increasing their size and scope. And the Democrats, in order to expand the IRS, etc., well, of course, income tax was originally a temporary measure too, um, to expand the powers and the reach of the FBI, to ensure that they can remove their, their opposition to their political profiteering and their, their sort of uniparty running of the country, they've had to re-identify new enemies despite the very flimsy grounds on which they were charged. I mean, we remember, remember Roger Stone, um, uh, Pete Navarro was arrested on the tarmac, put in leg shackles, strip searched. Meanwhile, you've got the Hunter Biden laptop story, where the tolerance only flows in one's direction, of course. You've got multiple um, intelligence officials signing a document ahead of the 2020 election saying it's Russian disinformation, with zero foundation for that belief. It mm -hmm. was just an outright lie. And they knew it was a lie so they could get their guy in power. But it's 100% right that the... The justification for all of these actions, um, or, the, or the rationale behind them, should I say, is that they want to justify their power. Mm. And it seems self-evident in their actions. And I think the best way to actually understand politics in general is look at actions and then trace it backwards rather than listening to what people have to say, because you can't really take people at face value. Yeah. But with the Democrats' actions, well, everything indicates exactly what you're saying here.
Um, so just to read a tiny bit from this, Senator Marco Rubio from Florida, uh, Trump's former opponent in the 2016 campaign. So it's nice to see a, at least a, a little bit of integrity, integrity from some of the Republicans. Uh, and Mark Warner, Democrat, again, very rare. You see some integrity from the Democrats, sent a private letter on Sunday to the Director of Na National Intelligence, Avril Haines, and Attorney General Merrick Garland, the dwarf that he is, regarding the FBI's search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home last week. Um, so Rubio has actually, Rubio's office told Axios this. So we're just waiting to hear back from what amounts to this bipartisan effort to get the get the transparency on this matter. So all of this sounds fairly reasonable in terms of the, the processes that are trying to repeal this level of opaqueness. And then suddenly an NBC News contributor wades in, alleging that Donald Trump has sold nuclear secrets to Russia. Ugh. Really? Yes, the place that Trump literally threatened to nuke off the map if they stepped out of line, he's going to be selling the nuclear codes to them. I mean, obvious sane interpretation. This is there. just an obvious example of them ramping up the narrative. So, trying to sell a bigger lie so the small lie looks better, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just escalation. Um, so, in a completely unrelated tweet, he tweeted out this photo. If we can get to the next one, um, the Rosenbergs were convicted for giving U.S. nuclear secrets to Moscow and were executed on June 1953. Huh. Pretty flagrant. Advocation for Donald Trump being executed, isn't it? Yeah. So he's suggesting they get the Rosenberg treatment. Um, mind you, uh, it looks like even if the Democrats were to go this far, an obstruction of justice charge would be more likely than treason. That's up to 10 years in prison. So it doesn't look like the Don's going to be sitting on the on the three-legged chair that Ted Bundy also occupied in, in the state of Florida. Um, however, this, this didn't stop a former CIA director endorsing Trump's execution with sounds about right in response to that tweet from, from Michael Beschloss. So this oh, is Michael no. Hayden, General. Um, Hayden was one of the intelligence staff names who actually signed the letter calling Hunter Biden's laptop Russian disinformation during the 2020 election. So a literal liar saying that these are secrets from Russia is now comparing Donald Trump to two people who, at least one of them, definitely sold the secrets of the atom bomb to Soviet Russia and were executed for it. And you have members of the deep state in the, the mainstream media, which Trump reportedly demonised forever, but it seems like he was just telling the truth in that they want to kill their political opposition. Well, these people don't realise that what they're doing is essentially pushing America to a direction where political violence is somewhat of an inevitability. Hmm. That's not an endorsement of it, it's just an observation of the lay of the land. And Well, retaliation to tyranny is endemic to the foundation of America. Yeah. And if you have a uni-party regime that are saying we're going to persecute on spurious grounds and ultimately push for the conviction and killing of our political opposition, you are pushing regular run-of-the-mill patriots towards a position where they say the only way we can get recourse is to take up arms. And that's obviously not what we want. But if you censor people, you take away their, their one method of conflict resolution, you take away the legitimacy of the courts, it's not hard to see, we don't endorse it, but it's not hard to see how people will resort to violence. And we just don't want people shot. But these guys clearly do. I I just struggle to... to to understand the mindset, I know that they're trying to win political points, but don't they realise that they're pushing America to the brink of its own demise? Certainly. Yeah, they do. They just think they're going to win. They think their <laughs> tribe's going to win out. Which is the, the most depressing outcome of all, really, isn't it? Because yep. they're, they're happy to destroy America so, so they can be the king of its ashes. Yeah, but obviously all progressivism um, is uh, an outgrowth of historicism. So it's this mm -hmm. belief that we're always marching towards the utopia. Um, it's the mangled quote that, that MLK inherited. I forget who originally said it, but the arc of history is long and it bends towards justice. And if they believe that they are on the right path and the right side of history, they're working towards utopia, then you're not principled opposition, as we would say in this country. You're just an impediment to utopia. You're a speed bump and they can drive right over you. And mm. that's the kind of mentality but these people have. I've always been of the opinion that they, they hold these opinions, they voice them, but then it's another thing to then go through with it. That's like a a psychological threshold almost that most people are unwilling to cross because you sacrifice your humanity doing so. I think in ascending these certain state-funded apparatchiks, you have to be the kind of person that is, is willing to take a life with no remorse because mm. you just have to be that ambitious and callous and able to lie openly because all of your compadres are also lying, but you have mutual dirt on each other. I'm so depressed about the state of the United States at the minute. I feel very sorry for the, the patriots. That's why I'm so glum yeah. and glib about it, is that there are so many people that don't deserve this in yeah. America, that actually are reasonable people just want to live their life. Yeah, I agree. But this is being 
basically forced upon. Speaking of undeserving as well, the comparison isn't even warranted for the Trump side or for one of the Rosenbergs, it seems. Um, some of the, the actual conviction might have been put on spurious grounds for the wife. Um, so just a little bit of information for those who don't know about the Rosenbergs. Uh, the New York couple stood trial on May 6th, 1951, and they faced charges of selling nuclear secrets to the Soviet Union during World War II. Uh, they died by the electric chair at Sing Sing two years later, and they became the first civilians in US history to be executed for wartime spying. The information that led to Ethel's conviction, Ethel Rosenberg, had come from her brother, an army sergeant who worked on the Manhattan Project. He was sentenced to only 15 years in prison after giving testimony that helped convict Ethel and Julius. So he was their co-conspirator, their third man. Only years later did the truth emerge that Ethel, at least, had not actively taken part in espionage. The evidence has sealed her fate, her brother's testimony, that she had typed the classified information to her husband and he had handed it to the Russians, was false. Her brother, David Greenglass, admitted in a 2001 interview that he'd lied to protect himself. So... It could be, if Trump were to be prosecuted, he could be an Ethel Rosenberg, of where he did sweet sod all, but they still want to sit him in the chair anyway. Now, this is all hyperbolic, of course, but it's less indicative of Trump is going to be killed for some ginned up charges, and more a statement of the Democrat and deep state's intent. And this is a very dangerous t period to be in. Yeah, it's, it's so harrowing that <laughs> most people think that this kind of stuff just doesn't go on. And, and this isn't going to get talked about in the framing that we're talking about. It. People aren't going to give it the gravity that it deserves, that they're, they're setting Trump up more or less to be a, a traitor to the country and therefore worthy of execution. Yeah. And, and also, it's not going to solve anything, even if you are a raging Democrat, because all you're going to do is make a martyr of the man. And so you're going yeah. to ensure civil war, 100%. So... Either way, your plan is stupid. Stop it. So, let's look at the backlash to this, shall we? First of all, we have um, the resident Varys to the regime, Brian Stelter, the, the little eunuch creature that he is, um, <laughs> going on CNN and bemoaning the fact that the Republicans object to their republic being incinerated by the unelected media class in front of them. Let's take a look. The House passing that historic climate bill, the Inflation Reduction Act, one of the components of the bill is a lot more funding for the IRS to hire tens of thousands of more IRS agents in order to try to make sure people are paying how much they're supposed to pay. What was that called on the right? It was called a terrifying overreach by the government. The reason I'm bringing it up is, mm -hmm. let's, just, let's just call it what it is. MAGA media's hatred of government is reaching a new high. When you have a combination of these FBI stories and the IRS getting a lot more funding, this is a new peak in terms of that anti-government sentiment. So it's no wonder that there's concern in, with inside government about security and about threats. I can only hope that the MAGA media's peak of anti-government sentiment continues to climb. Well, yeah, it's a perfectly valid thing. Isn't the entire United States built on anti-government sentiment mm. in that? It was the, the British government. Well, it's anti-tyranny. It's not even necessarily yeah. anti- I mean, of course, all taxation is theft. But the entire, the entire point of that as well is it shows where the interests of the regime converge. They would like you to believe that the New York Attorney General's office, that the IRS, that the Democrats' uh, House Committee, and that the Department of Justice and the FBI all came to the same conclusion on the same days about their investigations. That, oh, we're just going to look into <laughs> Trump's business dealings. Oh, we're just going to hand his taxes over. It's just oh, a we're just going to invade Mar-a-Lago. No, 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 no. If the pundits, if the dumbest of the pundits, the least watched of the pundits, pundits over at fake news CNN, can decide that all of these matters are interlaced, well, believe people when you tell them, when they tell you who they are. Um, Do you know that Brian Stelter finally admitted that the Hunter Biden laptop story is actually real? I saw that, yes. It's and he did he immediately lovely. say, and that's a good thing afterwards. <laughs> No, he wasn't quite on, as on the nose we about it. We have reached that stage yet. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going <laughs> to happen. They're going to. I guarantee what happens is they're going to give Hunter a sort of tragic thing of he'll ride off into the sunset, commit to going to rehab. Isn't this just wonderful? And that this is Republicans demonising drug addicts. I'll put money <sighs> on that being the narrative. So I really hope not. It's going to happen. It's absolutely going to happen. Um, and they're going to blame it on oh underfunding in Republican areas of of, of drug treatment centres. Meanwhile, people are overdosing on the San Francisco sidewalk on the route to school. I saw um. <sighs> I saw horrific footage from uh, Philadelphia. I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a, an avenue underneath a train line. And they're like zombies. It's yeah. like a, an apocalypse is going on. Yeah, it is like the, the vampires from I Am Legend, just scuttling <laughs> on the ceiling. Um, anyway, enough of making fun of the victims of Democrat policy. The FBI raid has also exposed uh, Washington's double standards. So there's some interesting historical analysis here about Richard Nixon, Barack Obama, versus how President Trump has been 
treated for the presidential privilege of declassifying and holding documents. Um, Trump is accused of violating the Presidential Records Act. Congress enacted this law in 1978 after former President Richard Nixon claimed his secret over or Oval Office tapes and other records were his personal property. The law asserted, the United States shall reserve and retain complete ownership, possession and control of presidential records. So, I just want to interject there that that's a strange severing, and it's very Wilsonian. Um, this is what Jack Posobiec said on Timcast recently uh, between the sort of separation of the branches of powers, because the president is the executive branch, and he is meant to supersede the unelected deep state. But now it's almost the president is appointed, raw, and he has to ask the permission of the deeply entrenched civil servants there before he can get anything done. And what you see here is the sort of beast biting back that Trump didn't really respect this as a businessman and now he's suffering the consequences. Do you think they're foreboding that um, they, they anticipate Trump winning the next election? Absolutely. 100%. And that they're trying to reduce the president's power and to well, set him up to be able to do nothing. In the same week that he publishes, well, he speaks about Schedule F and the big expose <laughs> in Axios where he's going to fire 50,000 deep state employees, they suddenly go after him after this. Oh, again, it's awfully convenient, isn't it? It's Absolutely. Just, 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 it's, it's just naked power. Yeah, it's just the slow actions of the Justice Department trying to cracking down on that evil President Trump who wants to plead the fifth because that's his constitutional right. Um, in reality, the Presidential Records Act is the Presidential Damn Near Perpetual Secrecy Act. Former presidents pocket multi-million dollar advances for their memoirs while their records are mostly quarantined for decades from citizens they often misgoverned. So the point being is that even though the Democrats are hiding behind this saying we must achieve transparency, every other president that's acted under this act has had a level of impunity and has been able to profit from their personal records. <sighs> Whereas Trump didn't even profit during his time in office. He lost billions of business worth and donated his presidential salary to, to charity every year. So it's not like he's even in it for the money. It's ridiculous. He's in it because he actually cares about the American Republic and no good deed goes unpunished. So the Obama White House lawyers repeatedly invoked the Presidential Records Act to delay the release of thousands of pages of records from Pre President Bill Clinton's White House. <laughs> isn't that odd? That's Rather funny, isn't the it? the Obama one. It's the Clinton White House. Isn't that really strange, just when Hillary has an email scandal? Politico reported, at the end of his presidency, Barack Obama trucked 30 million pages of his administration's records to Chicago, promising to digitize them and eventually put them online, a move that outraged historians. More than five years later, after Obama, Obama's presidency had ended, the National Archives webpage reveals that zero pages were digitized and disclosed. So complete opaqueness by the prior regime. So are those 30 million pages now evaporated, do you know? Don't know. We don't know anything about them. Ugh, but it apparently worse, Obama it? Has, the, has the power to declassify and profit from this, but Trump doesn't even have the ability to hold documents in his basement that the FBI knew were there, protected by their own padlock. Insane. So then, this is why President... Uh, well, I wish he was president. Um, Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul... <laughs> of Kentucky yeah, yeah. Has, has called for a repeal of the Espionage Act. Um, he tweeted, The Espionage Act was abused from the beginning of, uh, from the beginning to jail dissenters of World War I. It is long past time to repeal this egregious affront to the First Amendment. Um, in, a proof, uh, in a post on True Social, after the warrant was publicly released on Friday, President Trump said that the documents were taken by federal agents were all declassified. Number one, it was all declassified. Number two, they didn't need to seize anything. They could have, have, it, have had it any time they wanted without playing politics and breaking into Mar-a-Lago. It was in secured storage with that an additional lock put on as per their request. They could have had it any time they wanted, and that includes long ago. All they had to do was ask. The bigger problem is, what are they going to do with the 33 million pages of documents, which many of which are classified, that President Obama took to Chicago? Mm. It's very telling that they didn't ask, actually, isn't it? Because you think that a former president, they don't want to make a fuss, draw the FBI into the ire of politics again, which they seem to do perfectly well on their own. But you think they'd say, oh, you've got some documents that are classified, can you hand them over? At least yeah. approach it with good faith, not just raid yeah. the Mar-a-Lago immediately. But that is assuming that the FBI are not, and DOJ are not being weaponized as instruments against Well, dissenters. of course they are, yes, and but that's unfortunate. that shouldn't be to. the standard. I agree, I agree. It should be more uh, uh, congenial, even if you are, again, the principled opposition. Um, so then this comes down to probably the best policy position I've heard from Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, well, she's drafted articles of impeachment against Merrick Garland, and also she said abolish the FBI, which I have to agree here, with. Here. Uh, Re Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene said Friday night that she had drafted articles of impeachment against Attorney General Merrick Garland. Uh, reminder, Garland was the guy who used the Patriot Act to 
to spy on parents who were protesting things like, oh, I don't know, Loudoun County School Board, where a <sighs> girl was raped by a boy in a dress, which had been covered up from a prior sexual assault from a prior he's school a, because they were afraid of offending pronouns. He's disgusting little he man. He's a piece of work, yeah. Yeah, so I think he'll be the first to go. And then hopefully if the Republicans do decide to get off their backside, stop being so apathetic and limp-wristed, um, the red wave materialises soon for the November 8th midterms. And it seems that they're polling even never so slightly ahead. Um, but I hope they use their their power to finally go after Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, Merrick Garland and the like, because this is basically an act of war by the deep state declared on President Trump. And you cannot pretend that you are willing to not persecute your opposition when you say that they should deserve the death penalty for doing nothing measurably wrong. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast of Lotus Eaters, you can go over to lotuseaters.com to become a premium member on our website, where you'll get all sorts of exclusive content, such as Josh and Carl going through the life and crimes of the notorious Hunter Biden. If you'd like to follow Carl on Getter to see all the content he's putting out, you can go to at Carl Benjamin on Getter. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.